JFT just fair and direct. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to JFD's weekly market outlook webinar for the week June the 1st until June the 5th. I am Haral Pissuros, senior market analyst here at JFD, and I will describe the most important economic releases and events on the financial agenda for the week ahead. But uh, before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds to read the rest and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, there are three central bank uh, meetings on this week's agenda. On Tuesday, we have the RBA, on Wednesday, the Bank of Canada, and on Thursday, the ECB. We don't expect any action from the RBA and the Bank of Canada, but we do expect the ECB to expand its QE purchases in its effort to support the euro area economy from the damages of the coronavirus pandemic. As uh, for the data, on Friday we get uh, employment reports for May from uh, the US and Canada. So let's jump in into uh, the details. On Monday, markets in Germany, Switzerland and Norway are, uh, will be closed due to the wheat Monday and Pentecost uh, respectively. As uh, for the data, during the European morning, we get the final manufacturing PMIs for May from the Eurozone and uh, the UK. And the expectations uh, are for uh, confirmation of the initial estimates. Later in the day, we get the final market manufacturing PMI for the month from the US, which is also expected to match its preliminary print, as well as the ISM manufacturing PMI, which, which is anticipated to have rebounded to 43 from 41.5. Now, tomorrow on Tuesday, during the Asia morning, the RBA decides on, uh, on monetary policy. At its latest meeting, uh, this bank kept its cash rate uh, and the target of its three-year government bond yields unchanged at 0.25%, with officials noting that they have scaled back the size and frequency of their bond purchases. However, they added that they are prepared to scale up these purchases again if uh, deemed uh, necessary. Now, the only top tier data set uh, we got uh, since the latest meeting was the employment report for April. The unemployment uh, rate rose to 6.2% from 5.2% instead of surging to 8.3% as the forecast suggests. However, looking at the slide of the participation rate, the, non, uh, the not uh, that big increase in the unemployment rate may, may have been due to many people losing their jobs and refraining from registering for, unempl for unemployment benefits. Indeed, the employment change revealed that uh, the economy lost 594.3 thousand jobs, which is the biggest plunge in, uh, on record. So this may have raised speculation that policymakers could uh, stop scaling back their QE and perhaps start increasing their purchases again. That said, our own view is that officials are aware that data for March and April may come on the soft side. So if the spreading of the coronavirus continues to level off and at the same time governments around the globe continue easing their, uh, their restrictions, we think that the prospect of better days may allow RBA officials to continue reducing their bond purchases. What adds more credence to our view is that on Thursday, RBA Governor uh, Philip Law said that um, the economic downturn due to the coronavirus will likely not be as severe as earlier thought and that the current stimulus program is working as expected. Now, with regards to Tuesday's data, we only get Australia's uh, current account uh, balance for the first quarter, uh, with an Asian surplus expected to have increased to 6.3 billion Australian dollars from 1 billion. Now, on the political front, another round of Brexit talks is set to begin on uh, Tuesday. 
This would be the final round ahead of the June 18th and 19th EU summit, uh, by which the UK has to decide whether to ask for an, for an extension to the transition period or not. Now, with uh, UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson insisting over a December 31st uh, deadline, a failure to find common ground is likely to increase fears over a disorderly exit uh, in the end of the year, which combined with the prospect of uh, negative interest rates uh, by the Bank of England may keep the pound pressured, especially against uh, currencies which tend to benefit during uh, periods of market optimism. Recently, we saw a recovery in, um, in equity markets and this helped risk-linked currencies like the Aussie, the Kiwi, and the Canadian dollar. So, uh, we, I believe that the pound may stay pressured against those currencies. For example, I still see a downtrend and I believe it may continue in the GBP Aussie pair. Now, on Wednesday, the central bank torch will be passed to the Bank of Canada. When they last met, uh, policymakers of this bank kept interest rates unchanged at 0.25% and announced an expansion of their QE purchases. A couple of weeks ago, inflation numbers for April missed estimates, with the headline rate falling to minus 0.2% year over year, while uh, last week, GDP data showed that the economy contracted 8.2% uh, quarter over quarter annualized rate. Now, with the bank saying that interest rates have reached their effective lower bound, no, fair, no further cuts are expected at this gathering, but the disappointing data may have increased chances for policymakers uh, to expand even further their QE purchases. The willingness for more stimulus, if required, was highlighted by Governor, by Governor Polos uh, last week at his testimony before the Senate National Finance Committee, where he noted that if further monetary stimulus is required to meet our inflation targets, the bank excuse me, has tools available to deliver that stimulus. However, at this point, we need to note that this will be the first meeting headed by a new governor. Uh, his name is Steve uh, Macklem, if I'm correct. And although recent data and talks may have increased the chances for additional stimulus, Officials may not uh, proceed with any action at this uh, meeting as the new governor may want to wait for a while uh, before he starts considering hinting the easing button again. Uh, he may prefer to wait for upcoming data to reveal with, whether there has been an improvement following the peak of the coronavirus or whether there is a risk for the downturn uh, to worsen. Now, with regards to Wednesday's economic releases, during the Asian morning, we get Australia's uh, GDP for the first quarter. Expectations are for the economy to have contracted 0.3% uh, quarter over quarter after expanding 0.5% in the fourth quarter of 2019. This will drive the year-over-year -year rate down to 1.4% from 2.2%. Uh, now, compared to the contraction rates in other major economies, this may be among the softer ones uh, and uh, would confirm uh, RBA Governor Lowe's remarks that the, econo the economic downturn in Australia may not have been as severe as initially thought. In other words, such, uh, such a print is unlikely to tempt RBA policymakers to start thinking about expanding their stimulus program. China's uh, Kaijin Services PMI for May is also coming out, but no forecast is currently available. That said, bearing in mind that the official non-manufacturing index uh, rose to 53.6 from 53.2, we would see decent chances for the Kaijin index to have moved in a similar fashion. Okay, now during the European day, we get Switzerland's uh, GDP for the first quarter. And the, final, uh, and the final services and composite PMIs uh, from the UK, the Eurozone, and the US. Switzerland's economy is expected to have contracted 2% quarter over quarter after expanding 0.3% in the fourth quarter of, 2000, of 2019, while uh, the market PMIs are forecast to confirm their preliminary estimates. From the US, we also get the ADP employment report for May and the ISM non-manufacturing PMI for the month. After losing 20.24 million jobs in April, the private sector is now expected to lose another 9 million, which could raise speculation that the NFP number due out uh, on Friday may also come near that figure. 
Indeed, the forecast for the NFP currently stands at 8.25 million. As for the ASM index, the forecast uh, points to an increase to 44 from 41.8. Now on Thursday, we have another central bank deciding on interest rates, and this is uh, the ECB. Um, at the prior meeting, policymakers of the ECB kept interest rates unchanged, but eased the conditions of their TLTROs and introduced a new series of non-targeted pandemic emergency long-term refinancing operations called the PELTROS. They also noted that they stay ready to adjust all of their instruments as appropriate to ensure that inflation moves towards their aim in a sustained manner. Now, what happens is then, on May the 21st, Eurozone's preliminary PMIs for May rebounded by more than anticipated, but stayed well below the boom or bust zone of uh, 50. On top of that, uh, last Friday, preliminary data showed that headline inflation in the Euro area slowed to 0.1% year over year from 0.3%, with the core rate staying unchanged at 0.9%. This may have increased the chances for the ECB to adopt additional easing measures and or to expand the existing ones, perhaps as early as uh, this gathering. In other words, we believe that the ECB is likely to expand its key purchases of this gathering, but in terms of uh, market reaction, we don't expect the euro to suffer much. This may be a corrective move before another uh, leg north, especially in the euro dollar with the dollar coming under selling interest uh, recently as uh, the broader market sentiment improved and we saw equities, trading, equities and risk linked as is trading north while safe havens such as the dollar, the dollar has been reacting as a safe haven recently, uh, have, um, have come under, uh, under uh, selling interest. The euro was also supported by, by the European Commission plans uh, uh, to announce a package of uh, 750 billion euros to support uh, the euro area economy from uh, the damages of the coronavirus. Now, apart from the ECB gathering, we also have uh, Switzerland's uh, CPIs for May, the UK construction PMI for the same month, Eurozone's retail sales for April, as well as uh, the US and Canadian trade data for April. Switzerland CPIs are forecast, uh, CPI is forecast to have declined further into the negative territory to minus 1.3% year over year from minus 1.1%, while the UK construction PMI is expected to have rebounded to 30 from 8.2. Eurozone's uh, retail sales are forecast to have tumbled 15% month over month after sliding in 11.2% in March, something that will drive the year over year rate down to minus 22.9% from minus 9.2 percent. The U.S. trade deficit is expected to have narrowed fractionally, while the Canadian one is expected to have widened. Now, finally, on Friday, the spotlight is likely to turn to the U.S. employment report uh, for May. Non-farm payrolls are expected to have fallen 8.25 uh, million after tumbling 20 uh, 20.5 uh, million in April, while the unemployment rate is uh, forecast to have increased to 19.7% from 14.7%. Average hourly earnings are expected to have slowed to 1% month over month from 4.7%, which, barring any deviations to the prior monthly prints, is expected to drive the year over year rate higher to 8.4% from 7.9%. Now, this, this may be another uh, worrisome report, employment report but uh, bearing in mind that investors may already be prepared for another uh, bad data set, it may not have a huge negative impact on the market. On the other hand, if we get better than expected numbers, this may raise hopes that the economic damages during May were not as serious as initially thought and could help equity indices to continue their recovery. Paradoxically, a better than expected employment report uh, from the US may prove negative for the dollar because, as I already said, the dollar has been acting as a safe haven recently. So a good report may, may add to the broader optimism, higher equities, higher risk-linked assets, higher commodity-linked currencies, but lower safe havens like the yen, the Swiss franc, and as we saw uh, the dollar recently. 
Now we get uh, jobs data for May from Canada as well. The unemployment rate is forecast to have risen to 15% from 13% with the net change in employment expected to show that the economy has, uh, has lost uh, 0.5 million jobs after losing nearly 2 million in April. Now, although this would be another set of uh, bad data, taking into account that the Bank of Canada uh, will already reconsider its monetary policy on Wednesday, uh, we don't expect this uh, report to alter expectations around uh, what officials uh, could deliver next, as this may be well telegraphed by Wednesday's uh, statement. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much uh, for watching and listening. Um, at this point, I will ask if we have any questions. I will leave you a few seconds to ask, to write any questions if you have. Okay, so we don't have any questions. So thank you very much for watching and listening. I hope you have a great week and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again next uh, Monday. If you are interested in uh, more detailed and frequent analysis, you can find me on our YouTube channel from Tuesday to Friday at around uh, 7.30 a.m. GMT time. So goodbye, uh, have a nice day and uh, a better uh, week. Thank you very much. JFT, just fair and direct.